guys, this is Joe Kelly. Today we're going to be talking about sharing yourself um, without anxiety and self-judgment. And if you've caught yourself sharing yourself with anxiety and judgment, what you can do about it. So we're going to look a little bit at um, what that feels like, why that's happening and what you can do about it. Before the end of the live, I will remind you of the support that we're offering during this COVID period with a BOGO offer. So stay tuned until the end <clears throat> if you would like to hear more about that. And um, let's dive in. All right. So you might have uh, most probably, uh, most likely, highly likely, um, have caught yourself going to an audition or even, you know, being on stage or um, shooting on a set and having feelings of anxiety, feeling your heart is beating and like your chest is the only organ in your body or you're sweating or your voice is, you know, like shrinking. I mean, a lot of body sensations, a lot of tensions and a lot of rhythm change um, of feeling anxious like before and during the shooting and then having a lot of self-judgment afterwards, right? About am I going to do it right? Um, am I, you know, are they going to like me? Did I get this? Am I as good as the competition that I saw in the waiting room? Uh, what are the others going to think about me? What if I do it wrong? All of those thoughts might trigger a lot of anxiety. And yes, usually at the root of it, it at the root of it is, am I good enough? And um, um, the self judgment comes usually after when you think, oh shit, I could have done it better. When I trained in my room, I was a hundred times better, or I didn't do this, or I could have done that. Uh, or I could have moved this way when I said that word, etc. So those things might pollute, uh, most certainly pollute if you feel them before and afterwards to whatever extent. Some people feel a lot of anxiety that it's completely taking over. Some people feel a little bit of anxiety and, and it's still frustrating because they can't be there 100%. So um, we're going to be looking at... Um, um, what, what is actually causing that, right? Because what you want is really to be fully present, fully expressed in the flow, in the bliss, feeling completely free, instinctive, surprising yourself. You want to feel, you know, yourself having all the space in your body, you know, rooting for the character, really being present to what's at stake in that moment, which has nothing to do with you or your career, but everything to do with this character and what they want. So um, that's like such an incredible feeling that um, actors usually when I start working with them and I, I chat a little bit about um, what you're doing when you feel anxious or when you have self-judgment, actors will say that they usually try to uh, calm themselves down and you might have caught yourself doing that too. And that's always, for me, the biggest red flag, the biggest mistake that actors make when they want to get in the zone and want to be free and instinctive, is they, they try to. They try to calm themselves down. They try to ground themselves. They try to breathe. They try to slow things down. And you might have caught this. Um, you might have caught yourself doing this, to the, trying to relax, um, trying to pump up your confidence and focus, um, self-motivating yourself into like having the big picture. Come on, this is my career and I can do this. And like really pumping yourself up, um, trying to get inspired by others, like reading an important play or listening to someone on YouTube to, to try and inspire you to not feel that way. Um, I, I hear people really literally denying what they're feeling, denying the sensation, making it stop right there, completely like shoving it really down below um, and visualizing themselves doing great instead. Um, yeah, so a lot of trying to not have what's actually present. And so um, 
the, the what I want to do before going into what you can do about this, what I want to do is um, talk a little bit about why you're having these feelings of anxiety and self-judgment, because that's the root cause, right? Before going to um, trying to fix it, um, I, I would like for us to spend a little time into looking at why are you having these feelings of anxiety and self-judgment? Well, it's definitely your conditioning, right? You've been raised and conditioned and formatted and wired to feel a certain way, to think a certain way, to behave a certain way. And to really have a certain type of emotion in certain circumstances and to not have them in other circumstances. So you've really been trained to think there is a good and a bad, there is a right and a wrong. And because you aim for that good and that right um, that other people told you you should have, you keep thinking, well, what I'm feeling right now, this anxiety, is inappropriate. So I need to fix it. I need to kill it. I need to calm it. I need to relax it. And by doing that, little by little, you're walking away from the moment, from your instrument, from what's really happening, from the authentic energy that you're having in the moment. And the more you do that, the further away you walk from your instrument, and the more you walk away, you more you walk towards um, what is a learned behavior, or what you have been told is good, or what you have been told is better. So you're walking away from yourself and you're going towards what others, what you think others accept, expect of you. And by doing that, you're, you're, you're really like robbing yourself of your chances of ever being present, of ever being free, of ever being authentic, unique, which is exactly what you want. So what I'm saying is that you're feeling a certain anxiety, self-judgment, tension, etc., And by trying to, to, to kill it or fix it or replace it with a mask of relaxed, calm self, you're, you're robbing yourself away from what's actually present, from the energy that's there, alive, truthful, unique, that you're feeling that you could give to the character. So the other thing that you're doing by putting a mask and inspiring yourself or motivating yourself or stopping yourself from being anxious or putting a calm mask on top of you is you think you're now calm, but you walk in the room or you walk on set or on stage and people sense that. They know that feeling of having an emotion that's bubbling up and trying to shove it down because we've all been trained to do that and we all know it's completely inauthentic and it's not where we're at. So trying to be somewhere else doesn't change the fact that you're right there. Because you always are right here. So whatever I'm feeling right now is what is going to, if I can surrender to it, is what is going to make me able to be present, to be free, to actually be here. And I know that this might seem paradoxical because you might think, yeah, but I can't act if I'm, if I'm anxious and I can't act with those feelings. Well, no, you can't because you've been wired not to feel those feelings. So you keep running away from the present moment. You keep doing that because your system is unable right now to do anything else. It's been trained to do that. So that's why we do the work we do in this community. That's why we get you back into your instinct by unlearning all of those behaviors, by unprogramming, unwiring, undoing all of the resistance to your real, true, instinctive, free, authentic self, we, we do that unlearning so that you can go back into what's you, what's present, what's free, no matter what that looks like. And you are probably unable to do that right now because all of that is attached to a lot of fear. And going into those emotions seems dangerous, forbidden, punishable, wrong. So all of those things are preventing you from going in. So the work we do in the reset journey from resistance to freedom talk about a reset with this pandemic going on and the time that we have with ourselves, it's really a perfect invitation to actually reset your old programming that doesn't work for you. It doesn't. You can try and suppress emotion all you want. You still have it and it still accumulates. And if you resist it, if you keep resisting it, at one point it just knocks you down. It burns you out. You get depressed. You get sick. I have so many people in the reset journey write to me 
taking this journey because they're actors and suddenly saying, oh, I've had like a chronic disease for I don't know how many years. And after two weeks or three weeks of the reset, it's gone. I've seen so many doctors, no one could do anything. And now it's gone. Well, guess why? Because you have been wired to make your system function in a way that works for others, but it doesn't work for you. So your body at one point will crash, will explode, will have some dysfunction because you're not using the energy, the flow, the emotions that you have going on. You're shoving it all, you're, you're killing it, you're deleting it, you're suppressing it, you're trying to, and you can't. So um, if you're confined, most of us still are, some countries are not anymore, but if you're feeling confined and you have time and you wanna do this work to go within and to liberate yourself from all of these formats and all of the conditioning that pushes you into having those emotions in the first place, then it's the ideal time. We have a BOGO offer going on right now. If you would like to um, join with a friend, you can enjoy splitting the cost together. Um, that's how we're trying to support you during the, these uncertain times. And um, Voila. So let us know in the comments if this is interesting to you. Reach out to us and we'll send you all, all the information. Mm, so if you're interested in this and if this makes sense, if you want to do this work, you can get on our wait list. You click the link below. And as soon as we open enrollment, we'll let you know.